Hi, thank you for joining me today on Honorable Outfitters. Now today is the second part of a video of me showing you specifically how this Nesmic performs in doing what it was designed to do. And that is it's a hunting knife. So we're going to break down, not the entire D, uh, not the entire deer because we are running out of daylight and it looks like there's some rain coming. So I'm gonna show you some basic methods of how to use this knife. And uh, then I'm going to quickly shut it off, say goodbye to you and uh, try to process the rest of it before it gets too dark. So anyhow, the main thing that you have to be concerned about is uh, how to use the tool and handle it in nice safety. Because we are dealing with a wild animal, especially you want to make sure not to cut yourself because if you cut yourself and uh, you get any of the animal's blood in you, there could be a chance of blood poisoning. So uh, be very aware of that and how and where you use your knife. So when we cut this thing, uh, think about how you're going to use the animal. So you got these four legs right here and they are going to have the most amount of meat and in general the most desirous part of meat except for the loins. Now the loins are actually on the back side and inside there. So we have to be careful especially how we cut that. But when we cut the leg, what we're, the legs, all we're going to do is we know that we have to cut it here and we have to cut it here and uh, remove it. Now this has got a broken leg in it. So I'm actually going to demo by using it on this leg here. All right, so as you lift up, try to cut away from yourself as much as possible. And we're just gonna go straight in, in between the leg in the armpit and cut straight up. Same thing here. Go in where you already made your incision. And again, straight up. Now ideally throughout this process, the fewer cuts, the cleaner and nicer your meat will be. So this knife having a curve and everything is really specially designed for those type of sweeping cuts. Uh, butcher knives, if you have a butcher set, does the same thing. If you have a straight knife, you can do it, but it's just not gonna be as comfortable and as easy. Um, so that's why they, the curved blades are so nice. Each time you should be able to pull back and now you can see the membrane of where we were. Follow it. So as you can see now, if you can kind of see where I, I'm drawing my knife blade here, that's where the knife is going to come. The bone is right there. Pull it.
And there you have one leg. You got the shoulder bone with it. Do the same thing. Find your center line right in the uh, next to the chest. Just follow the armpit. It's really hard to do it. <laughs> it's more difficult to do it because this leg's broken. So where on the other side I had leverage, this one here, I'm not able to do that so much. So what you can do is once you make a couple initial cuts, go ahead and separate it. So you can see where you're at. Get your Nesmic. There you go. And again, you're just following the shoulder bone. Your knife is, it's not thick up in this area. So once your knife cuts, you'll be able to find it rather quickly. All right, so now that you got that done, now you have to decide, are you gonna keep the ribs? Now this right here, I can't use. This is, this is gonna to have to be all waste right here um, because that's where the trauma uh, was where I hit the deer. So we'll go ahead and cut that, get rid of it. Look at that, it's a pity. That is a pity. So when you use your knife, use your finger up on the top of the spine like that to make your cuts. That way you can pull away like so. Again, you want nice straight long strokes versus short strokes like you're sketching in a book. Some of that is waste, some of it can be kept. see I'm gonna keep this tallow <laughs> I'm going to process this down to some minutia because I am going to use it for other projects uh, most people would not do what I'm doing all right so anyhow that is I don't want to take too much of your time but that is the Nesmic and if you want to get yourself a really nice official reproduction like this is made 
by a blacksmith. It's all hammered out. It's not stamped steel and uh, ground down and everything. This is all blacksmith made by Holter Ironcraft, who I'm collaborating with. And it's made from real deer antler. It is a rat tail tang, but it, it's not a good bushcraft knife, but it's a great, great hunting knife. It's made from one eighth inch thick steel, which is accurate to the 19th century when George Washington Sears, also known as Nesmic, uh, was most active. Um, it's a beautifully shaped blade, perfect for processing animals, especially large game. Not so much for squirrel, but for large game, you can of course use it for other camp tasks. It looks great. It comes with a, a nice handmade leather sheath that I make. They're guaranteed for life. Both of them are guaranteed for life. So if you ever have a problem with them, you send them my way and I'll make sure that you get taken care of. Um, again, it's not a bushcraft knife, so you can't beat on this thing to split wood. That's, it's not for that. This is a deer hunting, it's a hunting knife. So if you get this knife and you're trying to review it or whatever, use it for how it was specifically designed to use and review it based off of that because every tool has a specific job. This is a hunting knife. Um, and I love it. I'm so proud to bring this to the campcraft community, to the hunting community, to the historical community. Um, I love mine and I know that you'll love yours once you get it. So if you are interested, the details are below. You can also join my monthly newsletter, which has a lot of great details, always has a historical article, has some specials and deals and things like that. I also want to make you aware that we are starting a camping community on Circle. Now this camping community on Circle is a paid membership, but there's a lot of things that are going to happen inside of the group. Unlike Facebook and other groups where there's a lot of distractions and everything, since it's a paid community, there's tons of benefits to it, including special breakout groups. So if you are wanting to camp in a specific style or a specific decade, if you're a historic camper like myself, or maybe you're a beginner traditionalist, maybe you are a, a hunter, um, there's going to be special courses on there. Some will be free, some will be paid. And I started this group because there's a need in the community, especially to bring people together and form camping clubs. Now, I don't know if clubs is really all that cool of a term. You can call it a group, you can call it a unit, whatever you want to call it. But anyhow, bring people together who have similar tastes, similar interests, and, uh, and just to grow it in that way. Uh, I like camping with lots of people. I'm, if you're like me, then this is ideal. But there will be lots of opportunity for different discussions. It's an old school forum with a ton more tools. I am talking a ton of new tools. So this is going to be a vibrant, powerful community once it gets going. And uh, you know, I'm sure you're paying for Netflix or Amazon or something like that per month. But if you are wanting, uh, you know, more of a tailored camping experience, camping videos, camping education, uh, or even I'm literally going to create a course on how to start a camping club. So that's not something that's going to be exactly useful to a lot of people, but if you're one of the people like me who's wanting to start different things, then it is. It is going to be a fun time. I hope you like this video. If you did, please click like. If you would, uh, if you have some type of comment, if you have a particular type of knife that you like to use when you do the game processing, I'd love to hear it. Please leave me a comment below. I, I love sharing and I love seeing you guys share back and I appreciate everything that you guys do. Give a kiss nut to your loved ones and I will see you guys next time, hopefully in Circle in January. Take care.